Um, thank you. Um, I I didn't know that it was going to end that early. I you know was hoping to do a little bit more striking and then um, you know maybe work on all the things that we have been working on in this camp because I've had a really good fight camp. So you know I wanted to show all of that, but you know anything can happen in a fight and so this the opportunity presented itself so I just I you know I took it yeah would you say that the, the going to the Olympics in a sense you know, it's a big occasion there's a lot at stake you're representing your country kind of prepares you for these kind of occasions uh, yes I mean the the Olympics that was the uh, you know the biggest and the largest stage that I've ever performed at so it definitely um, gave me the experience as, as far as you know um, the big lights and all the pressure so for me uh, the mental game and just relaxing myself is a big part that's also part of my training camp um, especially the last week leading up to the fight so you know whether it's um, whether it's a club show or if it's you know just a, or a big show I, I still go through the same process so that way the venues can change, but the, my method and the process, it remains the same. So are you all in on MMA now? Yes, my focus is MMA. Yeah. Not working on Wall Street anymore? None no. Of that. <laughs> no, was that, was I'm on a, a sabbatical. Job? Was that a hard job to leave? <laughs> uh, I, I assume the money was probably pretty good. The money was great, um, but you know, it wasn't, it was something I could do, but it wasn't really my, my passion. What's tougher, getting up early in the morning to do that, or getting punched in the face on the daily basis? <laughs> getting up early in the morning to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> when did yeah. you find that, that fighting was your passion? I've, I've always had an interest in it. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I would watch a lot of Bruce Lee videos <laughs> and, uh, you know, movies. That was my first exposure to martial arts without me even knowing what it was. I just knew that the, the, like, the discipline and the lifestyle was kind of something that just caught my attention um, so I was finally able to start formally training after after college actually um, but I think ever since I was a kid before knowing anything about martial arts about boxing or anything like that I've, I was always kind of drawn to martial arts and so when I was finally able to get formal training it you know, I just like ran with it. it. It was, you know, it was finally like, you know, I've always wanted to do it, and now that I'm able to do it, like, I love it. <laughs> Anyone in your life asking like, why are you, why are you choosing this over the uh, lucrative career? You know, why are you getting punched in the face for a living instead of taking all that that money on the table? Just passion. I mean, I don't have a passion for getting punched in the face. It's more of <laughs> I, I respect the process, and. It's, you know, there's more to martial arts than just the fight, you know, that's just one aspect of it. So I, you know, I, I'm passionate about the lifestyle, about learning, about, you know, building character. So those are the aspects of martial arts that I'm drawn to. So that's where my passion goes. Um, yeah. Is that a conversation that you've had with a lot of people, like your yes. family? Sit yes. them down and say, all yeah. right, here's, here's what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Was that hard? Uh, no, they're very supportive. Yeah. Can you talk, take us through the finish? Like, uh, how you knew she was, she was on her way out? Well, um, I know that I connected on two solid punches that I know, like, I knew it rocked her. Um, and I heard her saying, okay, okay. But I, but I don't, the ref, I don't think he noticed it, so you know I, I wanted to back off, but I I couldn't because the ref didn't notice it yet. So I'm like, okay, I like I just have to keep going, even though I heard her saying, okay, okay. Um, yeah. You think she was saying okay because of whatever went on with her? I think she just wanted the punches to stop, um, and I wanted to stop as well, but. The ref didn't see it yet, so that's when I, you know, I, I kind of took a pause and then I just continued going, just, you know, to solidify it, to solidify it. How helpful has been working with uh, Caitlin Vin? Obviously, she's a top 125 I love Caitlin. <laughs> I love Caitlin. Um, it's been amazing. This fight camp, you know, I have 
amazing coaches, my training partners, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to them. They've really helped me out so much. So, you know, I'm just really thankful and grateful to and all my amazing coaches and just an incredible team that I have. How are you going to celebrate your first win in MMA? Uh, <laughs> it's a hard question. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Guinness. I was like, <laughs> do I say that here? But in my head, that's exactly what I was thinking. Guinness. Yes. How did it feel being the only female fight on the first night? It felt... It felt great. I mean, you know, I I didn't really think, you know, too too much of that. It was just, you know, I'm another fight on on the card. It feels great. I mean, yeah, it feels it feels awesome. A quick of a turnaround, would you like? Um. I was I was actually thinking of going there to uh, to watch and support my my teammate fight, but then also because I you know I have family that live out in Hawaii. Um, and so, if I go there, I, they would probably want me to, you know, go to all these luau's and barbecues, and I'm not going to object to that. So, <laughs> if I do go out there, there will be a lot of barbecues and luau's that I would be attending. <laughs> yeah. But it's got Maybe. to you to be on that cover, or one of those um, two covers. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So how far do you want to take this MMA thing? This, this is your new this is your new thing. This is your new career, right? This yeah. You wanna well, we'll see how far we get. well you know we'll, we can take it. Um, I don't have all the answers right now. I'm just really because I'm still very excited, uh, <laughs> but um, I still have a lot to learn, uh, you know. But I'm very trusting of my team, and so you know when they say it's go time, then it's go time. So. I defer to them on almost everything. <laughs> what, do you have, what do you have to learn? Like what, 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 is your, what is your big thing you have to learn, you think? Well, also on, on top of, aside from technique, um, you know, like a lot, of, a lot of ground game, you know, because striking is my background. So there's just um, so many aspects to MMA that, you know, that's new to me. Um, which includes, you know, the cage wrestling. Um, it, you know, the cage is when your back hits the cage. It's different than when when you your your back hits the ropes. There's a little bit of give on the ropes, and so it's just a different feel. Um, so there are a lot of aspects that I still have to uh, to work on. But you know, I'm I'm patient, and I I just respect the process. So you know, we'll just take it one step at a time. Uh, it's just really hard for me to keep the weight off because when we go into fight camp, you know, I, even even if I was eating a lot, we, we would be training so much that it would be. It, it's usually really hard for me to maintain 120, um, unless I'm not in fight camp. So I don't think anytime soon I would be fighting flyweight. Um, I I prefer straw weight. Yeah. You were scheduled to fight uh, your opponent as an amateur and now yes. a pro. Was it to feel like one really long fight camp, and what went behind making it a pro fight? So um, it didn't feel like a like a long camp, you know. Like that's just how the fight game is. You know, you're scheduled to fight someone, and then it falls through, and so it's like, okay, all right, that's fine. You know, just go back to, you know, learning, um, and then if the opportunity presents itself again, then you know, then we'll go with it. So it it didn't feel like a long fight camp um, because I'm not like particularly like focused on any one person I'm more focused on um, evolving in in my game in this in this sport so it felt like you know any other fight and as a former Olympian you're going to have a lot of hype around you is that something you want that you enjoy you have all the media here um, for your first fight um, do you look forward to that and do you want the hype I mean, I'm, I always look forward to, you know, new experiences. Uh, this is definitely one of those. Um, so I'm not, um, I don't have that much experience with it yet, but I can warm up to it, you know. I'm adaptable.
like water. Bruce Lee? <laughs> he said be like water, so. <laughs> Thanks for explaining that for us. <laughs> Jennifer, you, you, I think, was it quite Kinesia you carried the flag for in Rio? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you have a history with those islands, you've got family in Hawaii. Have you, have you looked back into your family? I mean, I want to ask you why you started fighting, but have you looked back in the family to see if there are people in the tree, the family tree, who are fighters as well? Uh, well, my, my dad has uh, some experience in martial arts. He, um, you know, he, he practiced uh, Taekwondo. And um, I was I asked him to show me, you know, like to teach me some techniques, and and he did. But you know, with the one the the rule was I just couldn't use it outside of the house. But being very excited, you know, and um, with all my my cousins and my siblings, we would play fight all the time. And so you know, I'm like, hey, I learned this new technique, <laughs> used it, and then got in trouble. So he just squashed that um, but he's the only uh, person in my immediate family that's had some experience with with martial arts um, it's uh, they are they're trying to um, develop uh, organized sports and they've recently uh, become a member of AIBA which is the International Boxing Association so um, that was as of 2000 I think like 14 uh, and so ever since they became a member, uh, you know, they've they recruited me and asked me to, you know, to represent the country. So they're trying to grow the program um, and with the with a focus in boxing. Um, as far as any other martial arts, um, I think um, not a, I'm not in Micronesia, I'm not aware that they're trying to grow any of those programs, but I know for boxing they definitely are. And will you, will you work to try and, you know, having been in the Olympics, mm -hmm. do you think kind of uh, MMA deserves to be in the Olympics at some point as well? Would you like some women's MMA in the first place? I mean, I'd definitely like to see all martial arts as an Olympic sport. It's, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, politics and financial decisions behind these, you know, those sports before they even get approved. Um, I know that M Muay Thai is um, on the list as a potential Olympic sport. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm always excited to see the skill set and the talent in martial arts and, you know, to give them that platform to be able to showcase that skill set to the world I think would be amazing and would be great. So, so yes, you know, eventually I would love to see all those martial arts uh, showcased in the Olympics. When you were in college, could you have imagined then that one day you'd be in the Olympics and now knocking people out, you know, at, at a big MMA show? Uh, well, when they announced in, when I was still in, in college, I, I wanted to get into boxing. Um, they announced that that uh, they would be including the women's division in 2012. And so it was in 2012 was when I, I got really serious about the next run. But prior to that, prior to the announcement, I, I just knew that I wanted to get started with my formal training in boxing. Uh, it's just a surreal feeling, you know, I'm, I'm really I was just really excited and I still am excited um, but in a nutshell it's just very surreal and I'm just trying to soak it all in bring on the Guinness then, eh? bring on the Guinness yes <laughs> <laughs> do you have a preference MMA or boxing I don't have a preference because it's like comparing apples and oranges it's n they're not the same sport there are aspects that transfer over but it, you know y you you can't really um, you can't really like compare the two because they're just too many. There are too many like, variables and just different elements to each. And you know, in boxing, I know that it's you know you can have that purist mentality in boxing. Uh, in MMA, because you're you're including so many different disciplines, you can't really uh, focus on a purist uh, mentality. Whether it's boxing, taekwondo, jujitsu, you have there's that transition in between disciplines that you have to um, uh, take into consideration. Uh, so, 
That's kind of, you know, my stance on, on that. I, I love them both. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me.